we're talking about imaging law of life, imagination. However, before we start, there was a quote that may or may not have anything to do with that that I uh, saw today, and I think it's a good reminder. It's by Reverend Jim Stark. Yet all that seems crazy is marking the move into more conscious, compassionate, and empathetic world. We are in the throes of change to a higher consciousness, and every one and everything that is unwilling to make the change is revolting. Eventually, they will all just fall by the wayside. Patience and prayer are key. Change is the only constant. And I think it's a good reminder because sometimes either in our personal life or even in um, the world events around us, we get focused on um, what is not to our delight. And we give that a lot of energy. We say what's wrong with it. We can tell our story over and over and over again to everybody that wants to listen what's wrong, what's wrong with our life. And yet, if we truly believe what we teach here, the more we tell that story, the more we fo focus on something that we don't want in our life, the more that that is going to appear again in our life. And it may look a little different at first, especially in relationships. At first, let's say you were in a relationship and it was not as healthy as you'd like. And so you stop that relationship, you don't change anything about yourself, and you attract in a new relationship. And at first it seems different. And then eventually that same energy is going to start to show up. And you're going to think, wow, this seems kind of familiar to me. And so that is because we need to change ourselves from the inside out. And how do we do that? We imagine a different life. You have to start somewhere. And a lot of times, because we can be in the absolute center of discontent, it's hard to say, I want to shift this, and I'm going to do something to shift this. What can I do? And we always, because we're human, we always want to do something physical, don't we? We always think it's out there. If I change this, my life, if I change jobs, my life will be better. If I change relationships, my life will be better. If I change this, everything outside ourselves, if I get a new car, if I get more clothes, if I lose weight, if I gain weight, whatever it is, we always want to make it kind of easy. If I change all the exterior, somehow I'm going to change. It doesn't work that way. It is an inside out job. Inside out. And you start with your imagination. It was really cute this morning because I love how people take care of me on Sunday. And so um, Mary walked up and she said, do, do you do you want that sitting in the sanctuary? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, oh, it's going to be different this Sunday. So yes, it is. We're going to have a little bit of a teaching moment because I thought it was important. I thought I could explain it clearly. I tried to explain it clearly to a couple people, and they looked at me and went, yeah, no, you need, you need somebody up there to kind of um, present what I'm talking about. So, Bernie, if you would bring up uh, the whiteboard, and Courtney's going to be our scribe because if you've ever seen her writing, it's amazing. So when you imagine, one of the easiest way to do it, you can do a vision board if you choose. I like this process because, first of all, it's called the Wheel of Fortune. And so the first thing you want to do is draw a circle. And then in the center of the circle, do some representation. You can hand draw it. You can do a cutout. Put something in the middle that represents to you, this is something about my higher self. It could be a picture of Jesus. It could be a picture of Buddha. It could be a Bible. It could be the science of mind text. It could be an angel. It doesn't matter. What represents when you look at that? That's my higher self. That is something bigger than me that is always working in my favor. And then what you're going to do, I or a heart. Perfect. 
then you're going to draw um, your circle into quadrants. So line down the middle, line across the center. Probably not through your higher self. And then what you want to put around the edges is business or whatever you want to talk, call how you make your financial good. Could be business, could be job, it could be, you know, some people have a hard time calling what they love. I don't call this work because I love doing this. And so for me, it's not a business. And yet, what is it? So, you know, it, whatever works for you in that aspect. Family relationships. And so family relations, which is kind of self-descriptive. Uh, Things that uh, relate to you with your family of origin, the family that you have created, your other relationships, be it your partner, your spouse, your friends. We're going to put that in, in that container, if you will. And then spiritual. Kind of self-explanatory. Spiritual. What am I doing for myself? What is my self-care that is going to allow me to recognize more the good of who I am? And then in the last quadrant, we put social slash recreational. Oh, that's okay. So let's give Courtney a hand. Hey, Courtney. So what you're going to do, social recreation, what, are, what activities do you want to do? What trips do you want to take? What do you want to do with your leisure time? So that's really great. And you're saying, yeah, that's great, Gail. What does that mean? So what you're going to do, hopefully you'll do this on heavy cardboard. And then like a vision board, you put pictures in here. Pictures of not how life is now. Pictures of how does my life look in um, relationship to how God sees it, right? Because here's the deal. In the mind of the divine, everything that we desire is already there in form. Everything. We just have to be able to call that form into reality here. And so whatever that is, and don't, um, don't go, oh, well, I, I would put a picture up here that I, I want to go to Italy for a whole month, but that's probably not going to happen. Well, it's not going to happen if you don't put the picture up there. And it's not going to happen if you keep telling yourself it's probably not going to happen, right? So when you do this imagination, how many of you had great imaginations when you were kids? Oh, right? And then somehow we forget. I think some of it may have to do with schooling. Um, we weren't given the time to imagine. Maybe school has changed now. When I grew up, we weren't given the time to imagine. Not only we were not given the time, it was not encouraged. And so we forgot or we decided, well, it's probably just, it's a kid's thing. Only kids imagine. It's a waste of time. Do you remember what Bernie said when he started his reading? It happens in imagination first. It happens there first. And then the more you live with it, the more you breathe it, the more you know that it is true, the more it's going to manifest. And it's going to manifest when you're ready for it to manifest. And what I mean by that is not when you're ready in the physical form. So I could say... Uh, something and and I want it manifested right here I might not be ready for that manifestation doesn't mean it's not going to happen that's where faith comes in however it will manifest in your life exactly when it's supposed to and it will manifest if you don't do things like saying well that's never going to happen or wow I thought that um, that was going to happen and it's been, sorry, sometimes it's been three years and it hasn't happened yet. So I'm going to give up on that dream. 
no, don't give up on that dream because you never know when it's going to manifest. And when it manifests, it will seem like it happened just like that. One day it wasn't, the next day it was. Just that quick. And you forget that actually you started this process of manifestation three, four, five years ago. It literally happens when it's supposed to happen. So you put pictures up in every area of your life because we all have dreams of what we'd like our life to look at in every single area of our life. Right? Every single one of us. You know, one of the dreams for Genesis is we were gifted a large sum of money. Part of that money is tagged for us to have a new permanent home, a place that we can buy and call our home. What does that look like? I'd like a kitchen, right? I'd like a hospitality area that's not attached to the sanctuary. I, you know, there's a lot of things. And we're community. What would you like? What do you want to see here at Genesis? That's part of this process. Family relationship. Put pictures. If you have somebody in your life that has disappointed you somehow, how often do you tell the story about how they disappointed you? Right? And I've shared this before. I did this with my son. I used to say with my son, I had an older son, and I used to tell everybody, we don't have a really good relationship, blah, 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 blah. And then it dawned on me one day, I am keeping him in that we don't have a good relationship just by claiming it as the truth. So I quit saying it. And about six months later, we started to really have a good relationship again when I quit telling this story that just wasn't valid. It was just a story. And sometimes we think our stories are true and they're just an outpicture, right, of what we've created in our life. So you don't get off with just making this and then putting it in your closet. Put it somewhere where you'll see it every day. My suggestion, don't laugh. Your bathroom. Why? It's the one place you go every single day. That or your closet. Some place that you actually are going to see it. That you, can, that you can look at it and go, oh, there's my reminder. There's a picture of my life. That's what I am calling forth. Now, to sink this in, every quadrant, put some sort of prayer. Put some sort of words that mean something to you. Divine intelligence is in charge of my life. I am open, receptive to its rich instruction and You could put that in right in the center if you wanted to. But say something that is claiming this as my good. This is what I deserve. And it's not going to happen. Well, I shouldn't say that. It can happen. However, if you really want it to happen, full bore everything that your heart desires, then you need to be engaged. You need to do the physical work as a human in consciousness. And I know that's counterintuitive, but in consciousness. You need to do the work in consciousness to create it in physical form. And part of that conscious work is creating something that you can look at and be with and be with and own and celebrate.
questions about that? So your imagination is really that part of you that allows you to live your best life. To really create something. Just close your eyes for a moment and just imagine. Just imagine your life. How you would picture it to be. And when you do that, picture who's there. You may want to picture a particular day. Picture what you're wearing. How'd you get there? What kind of car are you driving? Are you meeting at your house? What does it look like? All of those are important to our imagination to make it real in the physical form. To really imagine to the nano degree, if you will, what that day, one day looks like in your life when everything that you want your life to look like is there. And when you do it, remember, it's not in the future, it's right here and right now. Because the interesting thing about our consciousness is, in all its brilliance, it doesn't know the difference between this perceived reality called our daily lives to what we close our life and imagine as our daily life. Consciousness can't tell the difference. And so why wouldn't we reclaim who and what we were as small children? We had imagination down. Nobody could stop us. And then life got in the way. So reclaim that. Create something that you can physically look at. And here's the deal, like with anything, you can always pin over a picture if something else appears and it's, and it's better or it speaks more to you. Have you ever put pictures on a vision board and then go, I don't even know why that picture's there. Paste over it. Life's like that. Remember? Change is our only constant. Change is our only constant. And don't be afraid. If something shows up and you're like, not exactly, then reimagine something else. Now here's one little key. And this actually is from a different book. This is from um, the seven spiritual laws of success that the home groups are using. Stay detached. And what I mean about that is when you imagine your most perfect life, let's say you want the most perfect relationship, don't imagine who that person is. Imagine the feeling. Imagine the God qualities you want that person to have in their life. Don't put a name to them. Why? Because that might not be your most perfect relationship. Even though your humanness says that it is, that might not be true. Let the magic work in your life. Let the field of infinite possibilities show up as infinite. Don't stay so attached to something that you limit everything else around it. There's a great story uh, about a, girl, a woman who was really wanted a relationship in her life, and she really thought she knew who that relationship was. And one day, it didn't happen. The person fell in love with somebody else. She was devastated. She really thought this was her person. Really thought, what the heck? And one day she gets called on a business trip to New York, and she's thinking, yeah, 
don't, I don't really want to go. I'm going to try and get out of that trip. I don't know why my boss thinks I have to fly to New York. Today's technology, I can sit at home in my jammies. I don't need to be there. Boss insisted she needed to go to New York. So she flies into New Jersey. She takes the train into New York. She's at Grand Central Station. She's got her Starbucks in her hand. She's walking through. She's pulling her bag. Slams into some guy. Coffee all over everything. Looks up. And guess who she's married to? Don't limit the universe. It's smarter than all of us. And it's been around a lot longer than this physical form that thinks it knows so much. So let's pray. Ah, uh, so we just breathe in right here and right now. We breathe in that godly essence, that thing itself. We breathe in that knowingness that it and I are one. Every single one of us here is part of that magnificence. Every single one of us here is part of that container of all. And so I know it exists in and through and as me. I know it exists in and through and as all of you. It has to. It is a circumference that, that has no beginning and no end. And so where we are contained within that. And so in knowing that, we own the fact that we are co-creating with it. Since it's an absolutely part of who and what we are. And so in that co-creation, I speak my word right here and right now, knowing each and every one of us has this opportunity to claim our life as good, to claim our life as magnificent, to claim our life as something that we are always co-creating in and through and as in every moment. And knowing that we are doing that, I know for each person here that they get lit up on the inside and really start to know and to believe and to own the fact that's whatever is going on right now happened in consciousness first. And so whatever is going to happen in the future, I can create right here and right now in consciousness. That is the gift of God, the gift of the divine, the gift it gives to each and every one of us. We are not limited except in how we limit ourselves. That field of infinite possibilities is open to each and every one of us. We just have to walk across the field, climb up on that little wall we built, sit down, and look out. And when we look out, realize, wow, I guess I had no idea. Time to take the wall down and truly be who I have come here to be. So I just say thank you, Father, Mother, God, Spirit. Thank you for this time, for this space, for this knowing that each one of us is here to be magnificent, to be bold, to be confident. In that, I am so grateful. So I turn these words over, knowing that as it is spoken, it is done. I let go. I let God. And together we say, and so it is. 